Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's John O. If you've been into photography for a short while, you'll soon realise that there's a bit of a debate amongst uh, enthusiasts about whether or not it's better to try and capture an image in camera using your skills and your experience to try and get it right first time or whether it's uh, better to try and capture as best as you can and then fix it in post with something like Photoshop. Um, I sit in both camps really. I have um, always strived to try and get the best image I can in camera. Um, doing photography for over 40 years, you learn a lot of tricks, a lot of experience, and that's always the challenge for me, is to have a vision in, in my head of what I'm looking to get, and try and get that as close as possible when I'm actually taking uh, a shot, whether that be film or digital. Um, but I also quite like to use Photoshop, not just the basic edits of straightening and cropping and stuff like that, things that I think just about everybody would be happy to do. Um, I'm on about actually uh, manipulating the image and trying to get something that I consider to be art. So, you know, something that's fantastical that I might not be able to capture in camera purely because it's just not possible. Um, and it's fun. Uh, it's a process that I quite enjoy uh, and I like sort of uh, trying to create something that, uh, you know, is a little bit magical, not trying to hide the fact that I've manipulated it. Um, it's usually pretty obvious. Um, so I thought I'd start a little mini series on um, some of the tricks that I like to use for fun, uh, all about Photoshop, but creating something a little bit different. Uh, and so this is the first one. And uh, what we're going to do is look at creating some mist or fog to add to your images. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. Might be something that you'll uh, that you'll like to try yourselves. So let's waste no more time. Let's jump in straight away and have a look. Okay, so I've got myself into Photoshop and I have a photograph loaded here. Um, this is a free image that I downloaded from Pixabay, but uh, obviously you can use one of your own photographs, however you prefer to do it, really. Got a night scene um, in a street. And I think it's quite atmospheric anyway, but a bit of mist and fog might just sort of add to the atmosphere. But it'd be good for demonstration purposes. So the first thing I'm going to do is our uh, palette. Normally we have uh, black as our primary color and white as the background. Instead of white, I want to use um, the same sort of, I don't know how, what you describe it as, sort of yellowy, pinky color that the... Uh, the photograph has like a cast of. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my eyedropper tool here and I'm just going to look for sort of the bright or brightest area of, of the image or a nice bright area of the image and I'm just going to select that so that that is our, whoops, I start to replace white I was going to say but I had black selected. So there we go. Uh, I've now instead of white I'm using a sort of off-white uh, and it will just help uh, my mist fit into the image rather than sort of standing out. Okay so the next thing that I'm going to do is first of all add a new uh, blank layer because uh, obviously I don't want to destroy the background. I want to better undo these changes if it doesn't work out. So starting on a new blank layer. And the first thing I need to do is paint some um, raw mist in, if you like. Uh, I want it obviously across the ground. Um, and I want it sort of, you know, swirl it in amongst the trees and that sort of stuff. But it needs to be quite random looking. So I'm going to start by just painting some in and then we can fix it later to make it a little bit more random looking, a little bit more natural. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is press B on my keyboard. So I've got my brush, um, relatively large brush, sort of about this kind of size in relation to your image will do. Uh, I'm going to make sure that hardness is on 0%. I don't want to have sort of like really solid lines. I want it to be sort of quite vague, if you like. You could also reduce the flow down to about half, maybe. Uh, opacity, I'm going to leave it 100% for now. I'm going to adjust the opacity later so that the underneath image will show through better, but I want to have the, the effect in place first. Uh, and then I'm basically going to start uh, painting, but sort of very haphazardly across the image, starting in the foreground and working my way back uh, into the distance. Um, I don't, it's going to be mist hanging in the air, so I don't want to go really above my sort of horizon line. So for me, kind of really the end of the street there is about right. Now you're probably saying to yourself, Jono, that does not look like mist at all. And you're quite right. 
uh, but we're not finished, obviously. This is just the sort of raw material to work with. So you'll notice it's not even. I've got it thicker in some areas than in others, and that's kind of the way that I'd like it to look. Once I'm happy with that, we can move on to the next stage. Actually, before I uh, move on to the next stage, I'm just going to reset my eyedropper tool and just grab a bit of a slightly different, brighter color. Go back to the brush and a bit of that in amongst there as well, just to sort of overall uh, pick up the color scheme of, of the image. Um, you may not need to do that depending on the image that you've selected. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change the blending mode of this layer to screen. And basically what that'll do is just lighten it uh, and give it uh, a more sort of eerie effect. Um, and then what we need to do, we need to break it up now. We need to sort of uh, uh, m randomize, I suppose, is the best way of looking at it. Randomize this, this because uh, that's not truly looking like mist at the moment. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to paint a bit more. That's back there. I really can't stop fiddling with these things. That's the only problem. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do is randomize this a little bit. Uh, and we're going to mask out some of it. Uh, so that it doesn't appear, leaving some behind where we want it to appear. So generally speaking, with mist, uh, things in the foreground will appear clearer and obviously getting less clear as we move back in the image. So um, we need to apply a mask that is random in that way. So the first thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to create a, a clipping mask on this uh, layer here by selecting it here, making sure that's selected. And now basically anything that we paint uh, in black is going to mask out this layer. Uh, anything in white is going to leave it there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to uh, filter here and we're going to render some clouds, uh, which give it obviously it's just a randomized um, cloudy effect. Um, doesn't look very realistic. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom the image out and we're going to edit that layer and transform its perspective. I want it to sort of fit the perspective of the street going back the way. Oops, let's bring that down a little bit. That looks a bit more realistic. If we just zoom, oops, zoom back in again. So uh, have that on full screen. Okay, perfect. Right, so what we're going to do now is start masking some of this uh, well, some of it has been masked out at random, but we'll start sort of painting back in the areas we want to feel and perhaps taking away this line uh, so it doesn't look quite so sort of demarked between the clear image and, the, and the, the foggy image. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that black is my um, primary colour and that the layer is selected rather than, sorry, the mask is selected rather than the layer here. We need to make sure the mask is selected. And again, with a nice soft brush, I'm just going to first of all take away that sort of harsh changeover from misty to non-misty and then just reduce the brush size a bit. Basically paint back in some of the foreground objects because as I say that's how they would appear a little clearer in mist. Same over here. Okay. Okay, just to and you know, there's no real sort of right and wrong way of doing this. You'll know yourself if it looks okay. If you've masked out something that you want to bring back, just switch back to your secondary color and just paint back in and it will bring some of that back. But just to have a play around until you're happy that it's looking the way you want it to look. And I think that's getting there. All I'm going to do is just take the opacity down a little bit. It's a little bit strong at the moment. Oops. Maybe about 75%. And again, just Okay, looking a lot better. That's uh 
the way I'd like it to go. Now, um, the miss at the moment is just that kind of uh, mist that sort of hangs in the air um, just above the ground or whatever else. Generally speaking, this sky in the back would be a little bit too clear. It wouldn't quite match up. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to just going to miss that up a little bit to try and soften it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new adjustment layer. Um, we'll have it as hue saturation. And what I'm going to do is basically take uh, saturation lever all the way over to the left, take all the color out, and the lightness over to the right. So effectively, I've got a, a white uh, layer here. And then I'm going to select my gradient tool and make sure that we are on black going to white. And then whilst holding down shift, I'm going to just draw a line from the bottom to the top. And what this is going to do is basically uh, mask out at the top, sorry, mask out at the bottom, uh, this, this faded um, uh, washed out look I did with a hue saturation layer, but gradually it fading back in. Obviously it's a little bit too stark at the moment. So again, I'm just gonna change the blending mode to screen and I'm gonna change the opacity, reduce that down so it's not quite as stark uh, as it was. And there we go, I'm happy with that. So if I just turn off the layers and show you the before and then the after, you can see that we've hopefully added a little bit of uh, atmosphere or a little bit more atmosphere to our image, um, but obviously completely fake and that's part of the fun. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was a, a bit of use. Maybe you want to try it yourself. Um, all that remains for me to say is many, many thanks again for all your support. I really do appreciate it. Um, I've got some fantastic subscribers that are really, really supportive in the comments and with the likes and shares and stuff like that. So I'm really, really grateful, guys. Thank you. Um, other than that, another video coming as soon as I possibly can. Until then, look after yourselves and I'll see you again.